uh, they're similar, but I'm going to use norm.dist uh, here. Then Excel's asking for four of these things. So which of these things are you familiar with? Do any of them ring a bell to you? What about those middle two components, the mean and the standard deviation? Well, we know the mean is the measure of cent central tendency, the average. So if we imagine uh, that my mic here is at the, at the middle of the bell curve, the normal distribution looks something like this. The value right at the top of the bell curve, the middle value, that's going to be the mean. So the second component of the formula. And then Excel is asking in the third component for the standard deviation. So what's that? That's our measure of dispersion. Does the data look like this? Very dispersed with just a little kind of bell in the middle? Or is it all bunched up? Does it look much more like this? That's our me me measure of dispersion. Then the final component uh, is cumulative. We're just going to set this to one. We're not going to worry too much about that. Then X, the first component, that's the value we're going to put into the distribution. Now, remember, the normal distribution allows us to define the parameters and then put a value in. Then when we sample the normal distribution through Excel, Excel will tell us the percentage proportion of values that lie to one side or from from your view to one side of that value in the normal distribution. We're going to see it in action now. So I'm going to start with five here. Five is the number I want to sample. Uh, five is the mean. So that's the average right at the top of the bell curve. Right at the top, we have uh, the value of five. The value of five, if we, if we go down to the x-axis there. Standard deviation of two. And then cumulative, we're going to set this to one or true. We're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. So what value are we going to get? You should be able to work this out. If you're really on the money, you should be able to work this one out. So maybe stop the video, maybe even go back to the previous uh, conceptual explainer. We've got a value of 0 0.5 there. And remember, in kind of Excel terms, 0 0.5 means 50 percent or half. So why is that? Well, we've configured the distribution with a mean of five. So the value at the top of the bell curve is going to be five right in the middle. Standard deviation of two. That's not that doesn't matter too much at the moment. But the value we're sampling is five. So the value we're sampling is the value right in the middle there. That means half half of the values in the normal distribution lie to the left hand side as, as, as you're looking at me now of the value that we're sampling that's why we're getting 0 0.5 so what's going to happen if i change x here what's going to happen if i change x to six is this value going to go up is this value going to go down it's all about being able to visualize this in terms of the normal distribution so as i said just pop back to the conceptual explainer if you have no idea what i'm talking about so going to set the value we're sampling from the distribution to six and then this value has gone up that's because as we're moving across the distribution more and more values lie to the left of the value that, that we're sampling and if we change this to 11, what's going to happen? We can see we've now got a very high number. And then eventually, if we go really high, this is going to become 1. Because 100% of the values, according to the parameters we've inputted, lie to the left of this value. Let's reset this uh, back to 5. Back to 50% or 0.5. And let's just, let's just do it the other way. Okay, the value is going down now. Because if the mean is 5, 5 is that central value and we're sampling three, then fewer values lie to the left of three. And Excel is saying only 15%, uh, 15.8% 15 of values lie to the left of three there. And then we can go down to one and you could continue even further. And eventually this value would become zero. So I hope that's, that's fairly clear. We can illustrate it more clearly um, by rather than having all these values embedded in the formula, we can take them out of the formula, say X mean uh, standard deviation, SD here, uh, alt HBA. And then we can point the components of the formula to cells. How cool is that? So now we can control the parameters of what we're doing. We control control our sampling from cells.
pretty cool. So let's put in our original kind of ideas here. And there we go. And there's our original value. So now you can practice, just get a feel for what's going on just by using the cells. That, that in itself is pretty cool. So I've got another question for you. If we increase the standard deviation here, then what's going to happen? What's going to happen to uh, to the values kind of more generally? Like if we go for a standard deviation of 20, then we'll find that as we go up, that number, the number that the formula return is returning is going to go up slower. Why is that? That's, that's because the, the curve is flatter. The values are more dispersed. So for each number, we move up the distribution. It doesn't take up much more of the much more of the distribution worst explanation ever i know but because of the shape of the curve the values are more dispersed it takes longer for us to work through the numbers and to actually eat up all of those values if that makes sense uh, so let's go back to a standard deviation of two now, now a nice way to uh, demonstrate this is to use what's called a data table. And I don't think we're using data table in the walkthrough, but a data table is to do with input process and output. So if you have a model that consists of input process and output, that's what an Excel model is. It has to consist of input process output. A data table can instantly test lots and lots of inputs and show you the outputs. How cool is that? A data table. Uh, you can find videos on the YouTube channel. Uh, I've got a beginner's guide to uh, data tables, I, I believe. Um, so let's say row minus eight here. That's going to give us give us one. Let's copy this down. Control D, Control C, Control V, V. Then to get the data table to work at the top of the data table, uh, you have to put your output cell. And our output cell, of course, is where we have the norm um, normal distribution formula. Then we have to select all of this area, uh, so the whole column, including. Uh, the row above the column, Alt A W T, Alt A W T on the Windows PC, or you can go to data and then outside of your screenshot, what if analysis and data table, what if analysis and data table, Alt A W T. And in this case, uh, we're, we're dealing with column inputs because I've arranged the inputs in a column. And what's our input cell? Well, X. So these are all the values of X. Uh, that I want to test. And that's what Excel has gone and done then. So remember at the beginning, uh, I was testing different values of X. So that, that's what Excel has done. It's taken all of these values of X, put them into the model, and then written down the outputs for me. That's pretty cool. And I can confirm this by, well, now we have a value of uh, 0 0.999767. I can see that value down here. So if we were to go ahead and increase the standard deviation, then what would happen to these values? Let's go ahead and increase them. And we can see here, yeah, it takes longer for Excel to eat up all of those values, to encompass all of the values in the normal distribution because they're more spread out. And we could see this um, even more emphatically if we increase the standard deviation. Then what if we have a standard deviation of one? Well, we'll see very quickly, Excel kind of eats up all of the values uh, in the distribution. So quick introduction there. I think on its own, that'll be difficult to make sense of. But if you look at the conceptual explainer as well, the conceptual explainer and this practical demonstration of how we can sample uh, the normal distribution, you should be able to understand at least in practice how it's actually used and what... Hi everybody, it's Chris here. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed getting to know the normal distribution. Now this video is taken from our course which is Excel VBA Business Simulation from beginner to professional. We've got 41 videos in there, over 10 hours of content. I'm gonna take you through it step by step, how to get to grips with cool statistical techniques like this and get them working for you to generate powerful Excel models that are gonna do things like simulate our business situations, which is super cool. I've done a few projects like that that have turned out really well, but also to do things like generate random data sets, a really important practical thing that if you ever have to do Excel training sessions, or if you have to populate models with data, 
you can do that at the click of a button. We're going to go through all of that in the Excel VBA business simulation course from beginner to professional. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to see you over there. The click is in the description below this video.